Welcome to the Amazing Clarks Podcast on the Black Love Podcast Network. My name is Anthony Clark. And I'm Melanie Clark. And we are the, the Amazing, Amazing Clarks. Clarks. We're both award-winning certified life and love coaches and a husband and wife duo that have been coaching together as a team for 22 years and we've been passionately in love for 30 years. They call us the Amazing Clarks because we empower people to live amazing lives. And we are doing this podcast to help create a love revolution. The love revolution is about putting more love out into the universe and bringing more love into our world. So we're talking about concepts and ideas that help you love yourself and others more. That's right. So today we got a great show for you. We're going to kind of switch it up today. We're taking actually questions that we had listeners submit. And so that's going to be really exciting. And we don't know what those questions are. So we're going to do them live on air. But before we do that, let's catch up with the clocks. Yes. So anything special about your week, baby? I actually had kind of a tough week because it was my nephew's birthday. And it was so interesting. I was mourning and I was sad. And my daughter texted me and said, Mom, listen to your podcast on death. It really helped me. And so I actually did. I went and listened to it. And it did help me. I was grateful. Some of you listeners may not know it, but she's talking about our nephew that passed away a couple of years ago. How many five years, years Five now. years ago. Wow, it's been five yeah, years. It, was, it would have been his 45th birthday on Wednesday. So I was just sad. Yeah. And that's okay. It's okay to be sad. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. But sometimes when you're sad, you just need to focus on some perspective that helps you to deal with it. And I was able to do that, which it was helpful. Good job, baby. You know, one of the things I realized listening to the podcast... I love being a coach because being a coach helps me stay focused on positive energy, yeah. positive thinking, way more than most people. So I get the opportunity to manage my energy a lot more than most people do because they're distracted and I'm working in this modality every day. Okay. So I That's realized true. that That's, and that was yeah, awesome. We've, we've talked about that mm -hmm. before that it keeps us on top of all spiritual game, yep. our relationship game. I love it. Yes. I agree with you. Yes. You know, one thing I'd like to say about this past week, mm -hmm. I want to give you kudos for something. Oh. This past week, mm -hmm. you know, woke up, you know, run the program, mm -hmm. everything's going great, the birds are chirping, <laughs> the flowers are blooming, right. you know, life is good. Mm -hmm. So you asked me a question and I gave you my response and next thing I know, we were in a fight, oh. a passionate debate. You're welcome. <laughs> it was one of those that we talked about in previous episodes about the landmines. Yeah. In a relationship, as much as we've been together 30 years, madly in love, best friends, and we're coaches, but we right. still have conflict. Yes, we, we do. We still have disagreements and arguments. Of course, we always tell our clients that that's a part of growth. Yes. In all relationships. And we're no different. True. And those disagreements are giving us opportunities to grow. To go there, you have to grow there. Mm -hmm. So we stepped on a landmine. Right. This past week, it was like, okay, here we go. And it's like a circle, a circle, a circle, and <laughs> nothing's going to get resolved. We went through a similar landmine the week before that. Yes. After going around circle, 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 circles, we came up with a solution. Right. When a partner comes to you and says, hey, you did this and it bothered me. Right. Instead of just responding and just saying, well, I didn't mean to do that, or I didn't do that, or you did... To just or start you did it, it to me, or... Right. Yeah. You said, okay, I'd prefer it if we started with, I'm sorry, I made you feel that way. Yes. But that was not my intention. Mm -hmm. This was my intention. Right. And so to me, it's like just saying, I'm sorry you felt this way makes the difference. Yep. Instead of just going right to, that was not my intention, this was my intention. Yes. Okay, fine. If that's what's going to make you feel better and make you drop it and make you accept it and we can move on with a beautiful day, mm -hmm. then I'll do that. But in the back of my mind, I was thinking like, she's saying that, but is she really going to stick to it? <laughs> so when we stepped on the line mind again this week, right? I said, let me give it a shot. I left the house, you left the house, mm -hmm. and then I text you. Mm -hmm. I apologize if I made you feel that way or if made you feel bad or offended you, but that was not my intention. My intention was blank. Yes. And then you came back home and you immediately kissed me and hugged me and <laughs> said, you know, I see my part in it too, babe. I'm this and that. And all right, let's move on. Right. So it was like we, we came we up. We didn't with, both blow up. Right. We came up with a strategy and we stuck to it. Yes. And it worked. Yes. And that meant a lot to me. Yay. Well, I received that. And I just want to add one of the landmines for me was 
if you don't say that first, I don't feel heard. Mm -hmm. So then it makes me want to fight. So that's why I came up with that. It may not work for everyone. I've heard people say, like, I don't like when someone says, I'm sorry, I made you feel that way. They want the person to like own it. Like, I made you feel that way. But I don't really agree with that because I know sometimes it's unconscious behavior. You don't mean to make the person feel that way, but for whatever reason, they do. And I think it's super important to acknowledge each other's feelings so that you could move forward. So that's why I realized that's what I needed. Because when we fight, I try to look at myself and go, what did I need? What upset me so much? Why did it trigger me? What was it? And for me, if you just go right into your part of it, I don't feel heard. Gotcha. Beautiful. I agree. Let's move on to these questions now. Now that we got that out the way. So Rolanda in Nashville, Tennessee says, my husband and I have been married for a very long time. And a year ago, he started sleeping in the other bedroom. He didn't give an explanation and I didn't ask for one. Lately, he's been sliding into my, I thought I was going to say sliding into my DMs, <laughs> sliding mm. into my bedroom late at night, trying to have sex, but I'm not having it. Ooh, what's explanation? She really not having it. Now he's mad. And he's threatened to cheat on me. Ooh, Is he having an old man crisis, kind of like a <laughs> midlife crisis? What should I do? Sounds like there's a huge lack of communication yes. in a relationship, first of all. Mm-hmm. Until they get that communication right, there's not going to be any sliding into any sex, or anything <laughs> lovemaking. There's not going to be, nothing's good going to come of it. Right. First of all, start with that. Start with communicating, understanding mm-hmm. what's going on. I would recommend... To not jump and project all of these. Maybe he's going through a midlife crisis. Maybe he's going through. Don't guess. Right. Communicate. I liked your answer a lot. I like don't assume. Right. What do they say about assuming? It makes an ass out of you and me. You got to find out what's actually going on. Why did he leave the bedroom? I can't imagine you just leaving the bedroom and sleeping in another room and me not saying like, hey, we need to talk about this. Right. Right. So maybe him leaving the bedroom, something was bothering him back then and it didn't get addressed. So my advice is going to be a little controversial. Mm -hmm. This is what I would advise. Have sex. (laughs) Enjoy your life. One of the best ways to create great communication is through connection. And if he's trying to slide into the bedroom, kiss, reconnect, make love. The energy between you will calm down and then you can actually have a conversation about what's going on. Because sometimes when you haven't had sex for a long time, you feel really disconnected and it's hard to be vulnerable. It's hard to open back up. It's like the energy becomes like your cells. Like you were talking about cell talk, your cells become like those dogs, right? They're like, you're getting close to me. What do you want? So as the woman, you're the feminine energy. Receive him. He's trying to come to you, I believe, to shift the energy. I would make love. Now, I agree with that, but I think it has different variables that come into play that make the difference. Okay. If she's in a situation where she has that much resentment built up Mm -hmm. and she has sex with him, Mm -hmm. unless he's just like this amazing man that could break down her sexual barriers, like, you know, override her (laughs) anger. Right. She's going to be resentful and odds are it's not going to be very good sex. And -hmm. then if he picks up on that, that can make things even worse. So- if her energy is good about it mm-hmm. and she can let go of the resentment and really be in the moment right. and enjoy it and give and receive, then that could make a difference as well. Now, I'll be perfectly honest. Mm-hmm. My first answer would be the answer that like we'd give any of our clients or anybody else. Mm-hmm. But I'm a real person. And <laughs> even though I'm a professional coach, I'm right. still a guy. Right. We're getting back into Anthony's Uh-oh, mind. Oh, here we go. My spidey senses says he's probably watching porn Mm. and he's getting turned on. And once he gets to a certain point, he tries to slip into the bedroom and odds are he's probably watching porn in the first place because he probably feels rejected by her Mm. because they're not having sex. So that's one of the reasons why he left the bedroom and started watching porn by him coming back in there. He's never communicating and dealing with the real issue. Right. He's trying to find a shortcut or a band-aid and it's not going to cut it. They need to communicate with each other. 
I agree. But we wouldn't tell our clients that. That was just letting you guys into my own personal. Into your own I would tell a client to have sex in a minute. I, in a minute, I will tell a client to have oh, sex. Oh, I, I know that. Yeah, that part's not bad to <laughs> tell like, a client that. But the most important thing was to not jump to conclusions first. Yes. But if you don't get the answers after trying to communicate, communicate, then jumping to conclusions is your probably your next best option. It's better than nothing. Got it. Girl, give him some good sex. Anyway. <laughs> Okay. Eric in Sacramento, California. After getting out of a seven-year relationship, I'm trying to get back in the dating game. My friends say that I need to get online dating apps, but I'm not so sure. Do you think it's possible to find true love online? I definitely believe that it's possible to find true love online. I actually know some people who have found their partners online and are very happy, gotten married and had you know, children. Tons and, of, tons yeah, of a lot of yeah, a lot of people. a lot of people. Yeah, I agree with you. You can find true love anywhere because true love isn't like we only hang out in nightclubs. We only hang out in buildings. True love is an energy. Mm-hmm. We're all entangled in this universe. Your energy, if you're a match to love, you'll attract that person. You'll end up meeting anywhere. It could be a club. It could be a restaurant. It could be a sporting event. It could be a funeral so there's true. no that's true right so energy is everywhere so if the energy exists then that means you can find love anywhere i want to give eric some real advice yes you can find true love online eric and we actually just had a client today that is coming to us getting back into dating that's dating online and one of the things that's so frustrating with her is she's saying the process is exhausting it's exhausting because there's so many people the swiping the following up the coffee dates that it's just becoming exhausting so if you're new to online dating eric i would recommend that you do it for a little bit and take breaks you got to step out of it it's a lot of energy and i would really say go into it with the energy of having fun i think so many people struggle with online dating because of what our client said today the process right like you swipe 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 and the people Stop seeming like people. It's numbers. It becomes a numbers game. It's, it's like a res- like a job hunt. Yeah. Like and, going through resumes. Yeah. And it's almost like a sales strategy, right? Like you got to get so many leads to get quality candidates and you got to go through all of these people. And that becomes exhausting. It dehumanizes people and it's not fun anymore. So after we met with her today, I was thinking about this, about online dating. And I thought about dating back in the day when we were dating. Right. And I realized dating was fun. You go to the club, you get dressed up, like you look forward to it. Online dating isn't that. It's not looking forward to it. It's not getting dressed up. It's not getting excited. It's not thinking about possibility. And I think that's why it's not as appealing to a lot of people. It's almost like a shortcut, right? Like, I don't got to get dressed. I don't got to show up. I don't got to try. I just click, 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 click. And then I'll deal with these people a little bit instead of investing more energy like we did back in the day when we were dating. Right. But like we've talked about before, if we would have had online dating when we were child, we would have killed the game. We would have been (laughs) cleaned up. Man. So it's all perspective. You know, the client that we had today we actually threw some deep stuff at her. What I was basically sharing with her was that the universe is literally like being online. It's mm-hmm. like Wi-Fi. Right. And let's say like you want to find an apartment. Mm-hmm. In the physical world, in the particle world, you would have to get in your car, go look at an apartment, get in a car, look at another one, drive from A to B to Z, get on the freeway, traffic time. It would be incredibly time consuming because you're doing it in the physical world. You're doing it offline. Right. But if you were to look for apartments online Mm -hmm. and within an hour, you can see, you know, hundreds hundreds of places Mm -hmm. that you can look through. Right. Because it's all entangled. It's all connected. Right. And so with dating, it's the same way. What she was doing is that when she was looking for dates, she was depressed. She was frustrated. And when that happens, we have this electromagnetic energy field around us. And when we're happy, it literally connects to the universe of Wi-Fi. And you can attract anything that you want immediately. Just like you're looking for homes. You can do so much in such a short amount of time. Way more than you can do when you're offline. Right. 
But then when you're frustrated and sad, that electromagnetic field, it literally disconnects from that universal online. Now you're doing it in the physical world. Mm -hmm. It's much harder. Right. So what we explained to her was when you get online, feel good. Yes. Be in alignment. Be in alignment. Mm -hmm. Because then while you're literally online, you're also connected to the universal online and you can attract that person much, much faster. So your attitude is really important. You got to feel good online dating. I agree 100%. The advice is be in alignment when you're online. And yes, you can find love online. You can find love anywhere. There's virtual online and there's universal Mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. Okay, Frida in DC. I'm a 35-year-old single woman and I'm attached to a man that is a little overweight. We hang out together and flirt, but when he talks about us dating, I get scared because of the weight and what people might say. I like bigger men, but my mother and my sister are very judgmental. I would hate to be embarrassed on a date if someone stares at us or makes a rude comment. My heart is telling me he's the one, Mm. but I'm not sure that Mm. I can stand in comments. What should I do? Follow your heart. If your heart tells you that he may be the one, you have to work on your judgment. And if your family's judgmental, the odds are you're judgmental. And so you're struggling with how you're viewing him and you're concerned about how everybody else is going to view him. But you got to look at the heart. You got to look at how you feel when you're with him. And when it comes to your love, there's going to be a certain point that everyone has to go through where sometimes you have to choose your love over your family of origin. Because at the end of the day, that's going to be the person that you live your life with. If you are attracted to big and sexy, I am not mad at it. Everybody deserves love. Like there's all types of people in the world and all types of people are attracted to all types of people. And if that's your thing, then you need to just be like, this is what I like. This is what I want. And if anybody has something to say, you are not allowed around us. Like you got to stand up for what you like, what you love, who you love and recognize don't give your power to other people. I've said this to clients before, and this is going to sound so brutal, but when you let your parents and you're a grown ass person, you let your parents dictate your love life and your personal life, you got to realize this is the hard part. They're going to transition someday and you've been living your life for them. Mm -hmm. And now you don't have what you want in your life because you let them dictate your life. So you got to stand up to mama sometimes. You got to stand up to daddy sometimes and be like, I'm grown. This is my life and I'm standing in my power. Doesn't mean that I don't love you, but it's time for me to make my own choices. And I love this big man. He's sexy. I agree with you 110%. These days, there's so many people looking for love that if you find someone that's a potential match to you, you are blessed. Don't never look a gift horse in the mouth. Be grateful that you attracted that person. Enjoy it. I'm willing to bet that She is a judgmental individual. Yeah. Because the way it tends to work is that when you're worried about whether other people are judging you and you put a lot of energy into that, nine times out of 10, that's because you're always judging other people. Now you're paranoid about other people judging you. Let's flip that. If you never judge people, you don't think about judging people, then you don't think about people judging you. Mm -hmm. It's not a vibrational match. So I would start with, first of all, for her, to stop judging others. Yes. And if you stop judging others, then you'll eventually stop paying attention or you won't even care if other people are judging you. You won't attract it. You know, the way it also works is that when you're always judging others, then you also, you yes. judge yourself a lot. Mm-hmm. And we see that all the time. And it sounds like she's really hard on herself. Mm-hmm. She found the blessing and now she's judging herself right? because but, of it. Yeah, uh, the other part I would hate to be embarrassed on a date if someone stares at us or makes a rude comment. Mm, The odds of that are pretty low. And if somebody makes a rude comment, then you check them. And big guys are going to check somebody. He's not going to let anybody be rude to him. And if people stare at you, stare back, smile and nod. That's what I do when people stare at me. I'm really tall. So people stare at me all the time. I always look at them, smile, nod, like, I see you looking at me. I'm cute. You You gotta love yourself. You gotta be like, we're cute together. That's why you're looking at me. You can create whatever meaning you want, sweetheart. I would create, people are looking at us because we are adorable couple. That's my advice. Mm -hmm. You got it. Okay, Ashley in Atlanta. I love you guys. Aw, we love you too, Ashley. Ashley From Atlanta. Mm Mm-hmm. I love you guys and listen every week. Aw, thank you, sweetheart. Ever since EIP episode, I've been trying to incorporate EIP into my daily life. 
I work as a receptionist at a chiropractor's office, and there was an office coordinator job that everyone thought I was a shoe in for. I even went and bought a new wardrobe to try and actualize this job for me. Well, not only did I not get the position, someone who was brand new and not nearly qualified got it over me. I know EIP, but I am heartbroken. What should I do? Should I ask my boss why I didn't get the job? Surely this is some sort of favoritism. <laughs> wow. Some sort of favoritism. So basically she's saying that EIP didn't work for her. To me, what I got out of it is how can she use EIP to help her get through this because she's upset and okay. her feelings are hurt and she's turning away from EIP to favoritism, which is going to upset her and make her feel like they're against her. So what do you say well, about that? The way EIP works is that in this universe, there are no accidents. There are no mistakes. Everything that's unfolding is unfolding for your greater good. So the universe is playing chess, not checkers. So if you play checkers instead of chess, then what unfolds in front of you, whatever experience you have, the media experience, you'll think that that's the big plan. But that's not the big plan. That's just the first step. Yes. And that step, whether you like it or not, it's going to eventually lead you to what it is that you do want. The universe is looking out for your greater good. It's like a little kid where they think that they want all of that candy. They think that they want to you know, drink all the soda and then just go hard in the paint. But then if they do it, they'll get sick. Right. So when the parent says no, the kid looks at it like, you're punishing me. You're being mean to me. But no, the parents are playing chess. Mm -hmm. They know, no, if I don't want you to get sick. So that's why I'm saying no. So the key is that you have to have faith that the universe has your back, that this is going to lead you to something better. That job was not meant for you. Maybe you were going to get that job and you were going to hate it. Maybe you were going to get that job and you were going to get fired. You right. know, who knows? You may not ever really figure it out, but the universe will eventually lead you to where you need to go. I'm pretty intuitive. And I think with this situation, first of all, I would say go, yes, definitely go communicate with your boss and ask what happened. Ask if he knew how interested you were. Get some closure. Get some closure. And sometimes things are happening to teach us lessons. That's the EIP, right? We need to communicate more. We need to be more direct, whatever the case may be. But what I've seen a lot of times when people get overlooked for emotions in work is that they're really good at their job. And so the boss doesn't want to give them the promotion because then that creates another opening in the company and then they got to fill that opening. Sometimes you'll never know that that's what's going on. I work with a lot of employers and they don't want to promote because then they're still in the same position. So you got to go to your boss and say, look, I'm really into career advancement. This is what I'm looking for. To me, intuitively, it feels like an opportunity to be very clear very direct on what you want in your career so that you are owning it. And this is my word this week, embodying it. And when you embody it, you become it. And that's when you attract it. So this is EIP. You're being given the opportunity to get very clear on what you want in your career. Good job. Exactly. And there are no accidents. There are no mistakes. Yes. And there's and, no favoritism, money. Right. And you know, Don't you know tell I, that I, story. I was going to touch on that next. Don't hate on the person that got it. Yeah. Celebrate them. Right. Because that meant that that person was more of a vibrational match to that job than you are. You don't know what's in that person's vibration. Yep. You'll never know. That person is different than you. They're unique than you. They have different experiences in life than you. So they have a different frequency. Yes. And so for whatever true. reasons, they were a vibrational match and you weren't. Don't get upset with that. Your vibration is going to lead you to what's a better match for you. You just have to have faith, stay in alignment, and be in a place of gratitude. Yes. Chantel in Tulsa. Chantel. Okay. Come on, Chantel. What you got, Chantel? Mm -hmm. I really hope you all give some amazing advice because my, uh oh, here we go. Because my marriage is in trouble. After listening to your episode about the love report card, I went and had my husband fill it out for me and I did it for him and I feel awful. He was great, gave me A's and B's, but I, well, scored him honestly. He was hanging out in the C and D range. He was livid. He said I didn't love him and that if I felt that way, that we shouldn't be married. I just wanted to let him know that he could improve. What should I do? He's ready to walk out the door. P.S. Melanie, you are lucky to have an A-plus man. <laughs> 
Wow, nice. All righty then. Uh, yes, I am. It's not luck, though. I am very grateful for my A-plus man. First of all, I'd like to say that she obviously did not follow the instructions that we gave with Love Report Cards because we said do not share it with your partner. If you're grading honestly. Yeah, if you're grading honestly. Do not share it with your partner because that's one of the things that can happen. They may not be able to take it. And if you don't have, you know, expert guidance, then it can go south real easy. Which it did. Which it did. Yes. So first of all, he has to realize that to go there, you have to grow there. Mm -hmm. If you want a better relationship, you have to be honest about where you're at. The things that need to be improved, you don't suppress them. You don't bury them. You bring them to the surface. So you can address them, get in alignment with them, and move on. I would let him know that you love him, you think he's amazing, but this is an opportunity for you to love him even more and enjoy even more amazing levels of him. Give him a different perspective on it. You can't just go hard in the paint with that, with the report right. cards. No, it's true. I'll say this, sweetie. You just activated his ego. And ego is not going to hang around forever. And that's okay. You want to go to his spirit and you want to do what Anthony said. You want to focus on love. Here's the perspective that I would tell him. As long as we've been together, these areas you've struggled with and you didn't maybe know how to do it. This is an opportunity for you to grow. I have loved you and been with you and stood by you and built a family with you for years without this area being great because I love you and you're important to me. So this whole report card thing was really about us assessing each other to see how we can make our love better. And you maybe weren't honest in grading me, but I was honest in grading you. But at the end of the day, no matter how we grade each other, I love you and I've been here because I love you. I just want us to grow and do better and better and better. And that is all. Then give them some space. I don't know if you heard our podcast about energy and the inner child. Men, when they get their feelings hurt, they want to pull away. They want to back up. They can shut down. Give him the space to do that and say, I'm here to love on you when you're ready and give him some space to think through it. And he'll think through it and hear what you said and he'll be fine. And then slide into (laughs) the bedroom, (laughs) make love, reconnect, and show him how much you love him. If you address it again, which I'm sure you will, use Melanie's shit sandwich formula. Yeah, use the shit sandwich formula. So you want to break that down to them? Yes. Most people can take negativity or bad news if it is surrounded by positivity. You want to start with a positive then the middle is going to be the shit, and then the positive is going to end it. The positive could be, babe, I love you so much. You are so sexy and so attractive to me that the only reason I did this report card, what, here comes the shit, is because sometimes you're not always attentive or whatever the bad grades are. Sometimes you don't want to have sex, and I really want it. You're showing him the shit now. And so... I'm communicating with you so that we can get closer and create more love in our relationship. Because like I said, I'm super attracted to you. You're my best friend. I love living my life with you. I just want more sex and attention. That's all. So that's the shit sandwich. Because you told him what he's not doing right. Tell him what he is doing right. Tell him what he is doing right. Yeah, that'll soften that blow. Good job. Yeah, and people don't use the report cards that way. It's not good. You're going to be backtracking if you do that. So follow directions. Yes. All right. That was really good. Love it, love it, love it. Good I job, love it. Baby. Well, thank you guys so much for all of the questions. That was fantastic. We really enjoyed it. Please keep sending them. We love answering questions for you guys. Hopefully the listeners got some great information they could use in their relationships. So that was awesome. I agree. Thank you for joining us. Continue to follow us on our socials at The Amazing Clark. Please continue to share our podcast and spread love. You guys are doing amazing. Rate and review us. We are looking at all of that. We are appreciating all of that. The more love you give us, the more love we give you. So keep it going, you guys. We love you so much and appreciate you. So on that note, people, that's the end of our show. We gave it to you. Now what you're going to do with it? 
The Amazing Clocks podcast is executive produced by Cody and Tommy Oliver. And produced by Crystal Hill and edited by Masu McLemore. 